Hello, over users. Alex C, UV Ray Guide, and welcome to the free webinar for interior designers. If you're a beginner and you don't know how to start with 3ds Max and V-Ray, this is the webinar you should watch. We're going to go through the entire process from modeling DWG files, lighting, texturing, and rendering with V-Ray. Okay, so uh, if you're a beginner and you don't really know what to do, first time you open 3ds Max, a quick review. On the top panel here we have our moving objects here, rotation tools, selection tools, and we can use different uh, options for selecting the modules, geometry, shapes, lights. That's a very handy one when you have a really full scene of objects and you just want to select lights, you can select it right here. Uh, then we also have layer, uh, we have cloning options, aligning options, snapping tools, uh, material editor, which is going to uh, be very useful. We explore it a little bit later. And of course, the rendering options. When you open it up, it's going to be set up to default scan line. We need to switch it to V-Ray uh, right here, assign render. I'm using the latest V-Ray 3.6. So let's set it up. And now our workflow is been set up to V-Ray. Okay, on the right hand side, we have our tools for modeling. You see the basic geometry. We have more complicated geometry here. And of course, lighting, texturing and different measurements, uh, particle system forces, and so on. We're not gonna touch any of those. In this webinar, I'm going to show you only the things you need to know in order to model your 3D space. On the right-hand side, uh, V-Ray have updated a new quick tool panel, so we can have different quick rendering settings here. And uh, those are not really useful because I'm gonna show you how to set up your rendering settings in order to be the most efficient and fastest for the preview okay the next one we have here lights uh, sun system v-ray plane so those i can be very handy if you want to just quickly apply them to your scene however you can always find them also in your uh, selection panel here okay so let's start from bringing our dwg file i'm gonna click import import the file i need to go and select my folder and uh, during the upcoming training which is uh, very basic lighting i'm going to give you those uh, 20 files that you can start and model and practice your skills so i'm going to bring this point eight which is the very basic one it just got the walls and uh, some windows so it's a very basic for practice the download link for this file is below this video so you can click and download it and practice as we go along this webinar i'm streaming for the first time on youtube so i hope you guys all going to enjoy it okay now in order to work properly we can see that some are being broken down if i'm going to select i have three objects in selection the best way of course first is to attach everything so i'm going to click here attach multi and i'm going to attach both of those and make one solid editable spline now from this, I'm going to select the segment mode and I need to detach them. So if we just look at it, I'm going to click Alt W in order to go to the full screen mode. And if I click Alt W, I'm going back. There's another button here that toggles it away from four screens to one screen. So let's just analyze it really quick. We have windows, which is going to be here. So this is probably going to be front. We have a back door that's going to go here. This is going to be back and we have left. Uh, actually, this one is right. We can see the door here and we can see that this one doesn't have any door, just a wall. So this is going to be left. OK, I'm going to click T to go top view, Z to align it and G to remove the grid. Now, by selecting this segments here, I can click uh, detach right here and let's call it right because this is going to go on the right hand side then i'm going to select that click detach call it left that's our left wall it's going to go here that's going to be back and this one is going to be front detach front Okay, and that's a uh, top view, so let's call it top. 
in order to work properly we need to select all of this stuff all of those vertices uh, splines or we can select here shapes and click Control A so all the shapes will be selected from your DWG file and click on manage layers the best way to work with layers is first to delete everything you don't need so let's delete those because they empty how do you know if they empty it's nothing showing on them if you open it up we'll see our top left right views here so this we need to rename and call it DWG so this is our drawing CAD drawing or uh, any other program that you use now from here after aligning this let's close that panel and select those guys and give them a little bit better color so we can see uh, see those better now we can start aligning them um, by clicking on them we can see that their center pivot point is in the center of the general DWG file so what we need to do is we gotta select all of them click affect pivots only and center to object that way our uh, axis will be centered to the object and it would be much easier to move them around now let's select each each of those actually we can select all of them at once and here we can select and put this on local that means they're going to be rotated locally each one individually as you can see here on the y-axis now um, in order to align it we can see it's really hard to align it what we need to do is we need to activate angle snap tool that way it's gonna go with five degrees angle so by aligning it by 90 and those guys we need to align to the side and now let's move them and just place them so we can align them properly with the snapping tool Okay, I'm going to click P, go to perspective, and see that those guys are aligning on the right position. So door here, door here, windows, and a blank wall. Click L, go to left view. Let's select them and bring them right here. Click T, P, Z. Z is to center it and you can see that they center is pretty good now we need to align them uh, in a good way that means we're going to use 2.5 snapping tool and what it does it actually if we click uh, right click on that we're going to get the panel so make sure you deactivate all of those guys and just leave the vertices on because we're going to align vertices to vertices now if we select those vertices here let's find one here we go we can drag and drop this to the vertices side okay and we can see that's aligned pr pretty good and it stays on the line so that one is a good to go go back to T let's bring those vertices here can see this one also being aligned good now let's select those vertices and bring them here align pretty good T and let's select this guy here let's see which vertices we can choose probably those on the side so I'm going to select and bring them to that side actually okay perfect now when everything Z when everything is aligned in a good way we have our shell that we can start modeling from and that we need to do on a different layer so I'm going to open my layers again and I'm going to first I need to create a line so let's go back and create a line with two snapping tools why do we use 2.5 because 2.5 takes three uh, axes into consideration it means it takes x y and z but when it plays the vertex it plays it flat it plays it only on x and y so this is why we use the 2.5 and not three axes 
we don't want to model in depth we want to model everything on one line so let's start from this wall by clicking and creating vertices from that line and when we click on the last one we're gonna close the spline so click yes all right so now we have that line created and we can go to our layers click create new layer and call it geometry geometry okay so when we're clicking create new layer the selected object moves automatically to that layer so here we go we have that line now what we can do while this line is selected we can go and add extrude I'm gonna click E and add extrude to that line and let's give it a height of 3000 now we can see that this 3000 is not actually properly sized because I'm looking at my DWG file and it says that my ceiling height is is three uh, meters that means 3000 millimeters but the wall is not reaching its top view here so something is off that means our DWG file is off so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete this wall I need to switch back to all or geometry select the wall click delete and I need to resize this to the proper view because if I'm gonna model I'm gonna model everything in the wrong scale so my working scale you can check it out here is millimeters and my unit setup is also in millimeters that means uh, sometimes I can get a, a file that has been set up in inches and here it will be set up in inches however I can still see it and display it in millimeters if I want to in my case I'm working with a lot of European companies so that means my uh, measurements is set to metric centimeters or millimeters I prefer millimeters because all my library being set up to millimeters also and I'm working with the real world scare parameters which I'm gonna show you a little bit later okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click L here G bring my grid back and I'm gonna go to the helpers and click on tape now with tape I can set here my length height you can see it's 3.8 and it's not even reaching the top so the top probably about four meters that's too much so I need to click here specify length put it on 3000 that means three meters and I'm gonna drag it all the way down till till I reach I need to deactivate those till I reach my bottom my bottom line and my bottom line is this black line that means this is the zero zero of my space okay so I'm gonna bring it something like this pretty good and I need to select all my model and scale it to match that height because this is the three meters height I'm going to click G remove the grid because I don't need it and I'm going to scale it's a slow process but we want to make sure we are in the right measurements now you can do that before you export your model you need to, you need to export it in a proper way so that it will match your 3ds max file doesn't matter what you use SketchUp Autodesk uh, AutoCAD or Revit as long as you properly match those you can do changes and then update them with this technique all the changes you need to scale it and it will not fit in the same place so make sure you work with the right measurements and you do some tests and you throw files back and forth in order to see that they in the right scale that's one of the most first things that you should do while working I'm gonna click G back and bring my files here to the level zero and now it's all in the proper 
scales okay so my ceiling reaching the height of three meters now i can start working and modeling i'm gonna open my layer make sure i'm standing on the geometry if this clicked that means i'm working on that layer I'm gonna go back to my line click the snap and align tools and now we can model our wall I'm using scroller to zoom in and zoom out very easy P Z going to perspective view side view E extrude and you can see I have extruded with the 3000 millimeters that means 3 meters height and my wall is perfectly aligned to the top ceiling now in order to save a little RAM I'm gonna switch from realistic to shaded view because I don't really need to have shadows that's gonna ease up on my preview mode now let's go back to lines and keep modeling same thing here if you accidentally put a vertus in the wrong place you can click backspace backspace as many times as you need in order to fix the vertices one more time and place them in the right place all right i'm gonna close that line click e extrude and voila i'm having my second wall created again going back to top view line let's model those you can see this process is pretty fairly quick as long as you are familiar with all the tools and you can model your space with aligning the vertices in the right place okay there's another way to add the extrude if I go and I click copy can select that and I can click paste so that's now in the RAM and every time I'm going to apply this extrude oops is gonna get to the three meters height okay paste next one line G to see the lines better remove the grid close it paste and voila we got those now we need to do uh, different ones with a different height for the door so let's start from this one align one two three four and now if we paste it it's gonna wrap up our door so what we need to do let's click F Z F3 to switch between the uh, wireframe mode and the shaded mode so I'm going to rise that up to my door level and I'm going to lower this down somewhere here 70 okay now let's do another one here for the second door line snapping tools extrude let's go to the L left view remove the snapping tools move this up and let's align this like that pretty good now let's go and fix our windows here so the same thing goes for the under window objects close yes edit extrude 
F and now we need to lower this down to the window height like that let's make it even 15 control T now with this one we can also do um, duplication of those objects so that we're gonna do this I'm gonna click shift drag it make a copy not instance because we might change the vertices a little bit oh and we can see that one of the vertices here got a little corrupted so we can fix that by selecting the vertice and click corner that way it be cornered and let's fix this one too line vertex corner right so now this is cornered let's go back to that one that we were working on select vertices and just make sure all of those vertices are really aligned just double check and snap them because what can happen is uh, they can have very minimal distance between them if they don't snap that means they can lead to light leaks and light can go through those so just make sure you guys are snapping them properly so this side snapped good I'm just double checking the other side snap snap all right now let's click F F3 and select one two three deactivate the snap tool and with shift pressed click and drag those up now we need to increase that a little bit this is the scaling tool so by going on y-axis I can scale it only on one uh, one way only on the height okay again F3 and everything being set up aligned properly okay P Z F3 and here we go we got the walls and the windows now we need to do the floor so again snap to snapping tools activated click click whoops with backspace we can remove the last one close the line and with the floor I can go let's call it floor I can go actually below so the extrude goes up and if I go in minus I go down and in my case I'm gonna do minus 20 so here we go I got the floor it actually went from the zero level to minus 20 and I can increase the minus it will go all the way down now deactivate the snapping tools click shift and drag your ceiling up I can actually do it with the instance now let's do it a copy because the texture that I'm going to apply is going to be different okay so that's our ceiling here fixed that's okay if they go inside each other a little bit that's not a doesn't have to be on the line it's actually a little bit better because uh, we prevent from light leaks happening okay now I've got my space really well done and wrapped up click T F3 now it's a good time to add cameras let's add a camera I'm gonna go to V-Ray camera click physical if you guys work with 3ds max 2017 you're not gonna have that physical camera option you're gonna have a basic physical camera which works the same way so only in 3ds max 2015 and below we get the V-Ray physical camera all right so I placed my camera let's click C F3 I'm gonna move it up a little bit like that and in order to know which frame I'm actually using I need to go 
and uh, click save frame that shows me what frame I'm actually using okay now let's fix that a little bit better our aspect ratio you can have here different cameras uh, with different aspects cinematic ones 35 millimeter I like to use this one but in my opinion I'm going to use the standard which is 1.5 and we're going to do 1200 by 800 this is the preview standard when you're sending images to your client you want to have them not too big and not too small so 1200 by 800 will be good enough for the preview that means the client cannot really use your work for uh, his purposes so make sure you also put some watermarks All right so now we need to go and activate our V-Ray I'm using V-Ray server so I'm not using any dongle in order to do that and I'm gonna go to local host right here and I'm gonna activate my V-Ray licensing so the dongle is disabled and I'm only using the internet option now let's see voila my V-Ray starts to work Unfortunately, without internet, it will, it will not work. That's why if you want to get V-Ray with dongle, you always have the option to work offline. Okay, so um, our V-Ray been activated. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open my material editor. And I'm also going to change my rendering settings to be rendering settings for the preview I don't want to spend time waiting for uh, render to come out I want to have a really quick render with really quick results and I want to see them as fast as possible so first after adjusting my height and width I can go ahead and save the render let's call it test and let's save JPEGs full quality now here we don't need to do anything anymore we're gonna go to V-Ray tab frame buffer on global switches I don't want to do any hidden lights just in case make this a habit to turn all the hidden lights and um, I need to switch to bucket mode not progressive I'm not gonna use any GPU rendering so I'm going to use only buckets my CPUs to render this image all right now image filter is V-Ray one gross filter which is good it's a new one all the rest I'm going to leave by default only I'm gonna switch the bucket mode from 48 big buckets I'm gonna put them small 12 buckets smaller buckets run much faster so this is already a rendering optimization tip that you can use color mapping Reinhardt let's leave it as it is it gives really saturated color later on we're gonna switch it to exponential now rendering engine primary we're gonna use irradiance map since brute force doesn't have any shortcuts here you can see not much parameters to choose but with the radiance map we can use it on a low and we can reduce a little bit the samples the subdivisions and the interpolation samples to about 15 and 35 that will give us fast results light cache i'm going to leave on thousand because i want to have well maybe we'll reduce it to 500 to let it run a little bit faster okay all the rest is staying as it is and rendering elements we're not going to use because this is a basic very basic tutorial that i'm going to show you okay now uh, let's click render and see what we get everything is dark because we don't have any light so what we need to do is add V-Ray Sun so let's go click on V-Ray V-Ray Sun go to top view F3 drag and drop V-Ray Sun and it will ask us if we want to add V-Ray Sky so click yes and let's erase sky to our render now we need to position our sun 
to about 45 degrees or less it's called architectural angle and here we want to position it about 90 degrees in that range because those are the most beautiful angles that you can get click C and now um, what I'm actually doing is I'm adding a gray texture to everything so I'm gonna open my material editor and I'm going to load my V-Ray library, V-Ray materials library. This material library, you guys are going to get with the upcoming training, V-Ray basic lighting. You can see we have a lot of materials here. So I'm using the first one, which is called Clay 128. This material is just a gray color with some uh, V-Ray dirt inside that will enhance our ambient inclusion, those soft shadows on the on the edges it's just a little enhancement so i'm gonna click f3 go here to geometry Control a select all my geometry and click apply so you can see we have applied uh, this gray material to entire model so now i'm gonna click render and voila i'm already start getting this those nice results the rendering setting you can see it runs pretty fast and I have some Sun at the end and I have uh, nice blurred shadows here the Sun is kind of sharp when it's getting closer to the wall and uh, getting softer away I'm getting some artifacts I can see those blotches they called artifacts but uh, in general this is okay for the test renders we can increase the samples amount the subdivision amount in order to avoid those artifacts but for rendering tests we're gonna stay with a fast rendering mode so we're gonna get a little bit of those they don't really interrupt me I just want to see how the GI works and how the camera works now let me fix my camera a little bit better so I'm gonna select my camera and I'm gonna change the focal length so you can see the focal length for small places it can work really well here but everything below 18 gonna get very exaggerated so I'm gonna put 24 and I'm gonna select my right click on the camera select target and I'm gonna move it whoops I'm gonna move it a little bit here so I'll get a little bit nicer angle all right now I'm gonna click right click on the camera bring my camera and what I need to do is I need to put it on default so my default is for interiors is for F number and shutter speed 100 ISO 100 and my white balance is neutral it's pure white okay now let's do this another quick render override the existing image so we can see the image became way way brighter and it's got really nice bluish tone coming in and uh, it's going the good direction I'm gonna stop this render and I'm going to import some models actually just Windows I'm gonna click merge we do import DWG files but if we want to add models 3d from 3ds max we're gonna use merge option so I'm going to go locate my folder here and in the windows I'm going to click import and let's import all the windows so we can choose one I'm going to click P and we can see I got a lot of those so while all of them selected let's choose one let's choose this window and I click delete because all of them selected it's gonna get those windows deleted select that activate my snapping tool just the align tool F3 let's select that and center the pivot that way we'll rotate it from the center like that click Z to center the object moving tool and let's position that window 
at the place. Now we can see it's a little bit bigger, so we can scale it proportionally. If you guys do scale it, don't scale it proportionally. You can do it up to 20% of the model, otherwise it's going to get very exaggerated and you'll be able to see the imperfections. So make sure to scale it only on only on both axes x and y if you do it on one axis just do it only up to 20 percent so you don't want to do something like this all right now let's match this something like that c f3 and we have our window now let's select shapes Control a Oh, we actually have them in one layer. So let's just click here and hide them like that. Very easy. And let's go to all so we can select and choose everything. Let's choose this window. Click shift and drag it and duplicate it with instance. So all the changes that are going to be made to this window, they're going to get automatically applied to the next ones. All right, so this instance, something like this. All right, pretty cool. Now make sure the window frame aligns with the wall. Those need to be aligned here. All right, now what we can do is we can start adding materials. What I like to do here is to use my material library, which you guys going to get with the upcoming training. I already said that, but I just want to make sure that you understand how powerful this library is. We have almost anything here from metals, plastic, glasses, windows. So let's add some wood floor first. I'm going to add wood floor, select my floor, click apply. Now here we need to add either UVW map or we need to just click real world polymers and this whole thing will be set up to the proper size. Inside my map right here, if I go, I also have use real world scale parameters and you can see it's thousand by thousand millimeters. So meter by meter, I'm really using the real scale for putting the floor and the tiles and the walls, the wallpaper. That's gonna be the next one. So let's take the wall uh, stucco cream. Apply this. Now what I can do also, that's another option. I can select, let's go back. I can select all all my geometry without the lights deselect my window frames deselect my floor and my ceiling okay so i'm selecting just the walls i can apply this to the walls and now up on those walls i can put uvw map put it on the box and put it on the real world scale map boom well not everything got the right aligned so this is basically what we did with the floor or what what we are about to do with the ceiling here let's select ceiling and see what we've got in ceiling uh, white stucco let's apply this so it's basically the same thing real world parameters only with this i'm using a modifier to do the real world parameters where I have multiple objects. When I have a, a single object and it's been modeled from the DWG file, from the spline, it will have those real world map size options implemented in it. Okay, so now when this thing is done, we can click render and see how this thing goes. see the colors are working nicely 
and um, I get getting nice reflections already on the floor because those materials already tweaked there's another cool thing in the V-Ray frame buffer mode if we click this follow cursor everywhere we're gonna point the rendering buckets are going to follow my cursors okay so pretty cool getting nice reflection nice shadows on the wall here I like how the spot hot spots is getting uh, is working here and the reflections are getting pretty nice and this bluish tone works very creates very fit photorealistic effect for our render all right so um, just by looking at this render it looks a little bit yellowish and this is due to our color mapping which we can change I'm gonna click escape and I'm gonna click here a region so you will see the comparison between two color mapping modes so I'm gonna switch from Reinhardt to exponential exponential will give you much more calm colors I'm gonna click render here And we can see we are getting rid of that very saturated effect but still we have some yellowish going on so what we can do is we can use photographer's technique I'm going to create a sphere in the middle of my scene rise it up and apply this same 128 gray color okay now I'm gonna do is I'm going to click render and I'm gonna run my uh, calculation light cache calculation I'm gonna actually stop it and select my camera go to the color balance and take a sample so this will indicate because it's just simple gray it will indicate the main color in my scene so we can see it's kind of brownish grayish so what I need to do is go down a little bit go here up a little bit on the same uh, somewhere here it's more or less this uh, color is representing what I'm doing with this color balance is actually removing that color from my scene so if I'll click one more time render I can see that I'm getting much more uh, clearer and realistic results and they way closer my whites I are getting way close closer to the real white color and they are being less affected by the yellow color of the floor and the ceiling and the walls okay so in order to get my ceiling white this is what I need to do I need to take and fix my color balance this is a photographer's technique and um, it's been very useful in V-Ray physical camera okay so I'm going to click escape remove that sphere and now I can actually make another render and get the final result for what we have done here okay so you can see pretty easy stuff doesn't take much time when you're working with library of models and textures which I'm going to provide to you guys and um, all those rendering parameters can be also improved in order to get a little bit better GI here because we're probably gonna get some artifacts here here and there the render is not super clean but it's good enough to get that preview out and send it to your client make sure if you do work with clients to watermark your works and watermark your uh, previews it doesn't have to be a big watermark covering the entire render it can be something small somewhere on the side with maybe 10 or 20 percent of opacity something that doesn't interrupt but it still shows that this render was done by you and um, it's also good for 
marketing purposes because if those files or those images are going to reach other people or other developers builders whoever works on that project they will know and they will recognize your logo and they will know that you are the one that actually did those renders okay so um, I hope you guys like it I hope you guys like this tutorial post your comments below if you have any questions there are more videos to come we're going to launch very basic lighting training we're gonna do an update for this very basic lighting and uh, we're going to do a uh, three weeks where I'm going to teach this entire method of level one level two and level three level one is a clay render the way I showed you this is level two textures and final lighting and of course level three is going to be post-production and uh, final render with different extras for enhancing the photorealistic look of your final product okay so share it with your friends and make sure to open the upcoming emails because we're going to do some more exploration of floor generator plugin 2.0 and some photoshop painting techniques with photoshop brushes so share it like it this is alex your very guy talk soon ciao